Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and um, those of you who follow me on my Quantum Shift or my Herbal 4x1 YouTube page know that I just lost my long-term pet, Perry, and it was kind of cool. The, the vet place that uh, pronounced him, uh, actually, they're very cool. They gave us uh, some seeds to plant in um, memory of Perry, so I planted them in my forest here. Uh, we'll uh, open spot right here. So we're going to see what happens with uh, nurturing these things. And I remember I, I was putting my fingers in the ground to make the seed holes. And um, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to go eat now, but maybe I shouldn't wash my hands because of the bacteria that you find. The bacteria you find in the soil actually not ex it's not every specific bacteria, but the bacteria you find in the soil or on your carrots as you pull them out or on ginger, turmeric, actually they're very good bacteria. And <clears throat> there is a, a clean hypothesis where we wash things so much that we get sick later on in life because we don't get exposed or don't challenge the immune system with tiny bits of bacteria. And, and also the question about whether we, over the course of life, are supposed to have decent amounts of bacteria. Well, there's a lot of people now with leaky gut, irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, whether it's uh, uh, more dominant diarrhea or constipation, but people are getting fecal transplants now. So that's when a colonoscopist, a GI doctor, goes in the colon, goes around all the way to the cecum, the first part of the colon, and dumps in a slurry of uh, bacteria. Now that bacteria just happens to be the poop of somebody else. But here's something that's even more gross. You can actually take capsule of sterilized uh, poop from a healthy individual, take the capsule, and it will also populate your colon with good bacteria. Why would you want to do that? Well, a lot of people with bad bacteria, that's the microbiota it's called, the gang in the stomach or in the colon specifically, that's a digestive system. Uh, but the gang for those folks with bad bacteria is thought to be the reason for all their symptoms. Autoimmunity, uh, recurrent infections, uh, symptoms of candida overgrowth. So there are, there are um, factions of the population that believe that if you fix the microbiota, then you'll, be, you'll probably eliminate a lot of symptoms, which I tend to agree with, because I think we're just using antibiotics too often in uh, childhood. Now, my patients that call in and say, I'm coughing, can I have an antibiotic? Uh, I usually will give antibiotics. And honestly, there are uh, there is a question about antibiotic resistance now because doctors are over-prescribing antibiotics. But the medical community, I mean, the human medical community, does it, it pales. The antibiotics that we give pale in comparison to the antibiotics used for the animals that we eat. So because they have infections all the time. So, uh, I mean, if you're going to knock on anybody, uh, go to your food source. I'm, I'm vegetarian at this point in time. So uh, anyway, not to start a debate about that. But <clears throat> the concept today is uh, this is my probiotic. I always pick up a different probiotic every three months. And this happens to be the one I'm taking. But I haven't been doing too well with my gut. Been really bloated. And it's not working great. So... That in addition to what I've gone through, and again, check out my quantum shift on my herbal YouTube herbal 411 page and you'll see what I'm going through. But uh, I, it just dawned on me. So I change anti uh, probiotic. I change probiotics every three months because typically these things are gone. If you take one a day, they're typically gone in about two months to three months uh, 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 with a dose. Uh, this being like 20 to 30 bucks. Now, um, I... I I have a video on that. Check out my video. I'll put a link down below. Dr. Rick question probiotic spore. Uh, somebody had asked me whether a spore is necessary and I didn't think it was. But so I went back to thinking when I, I was feeling good at one point in time, I think it was over the summer when I also did the fasting mimicking diet and was right on uh, with my bowels and my muscle responsiveness, my exercise, my proper thinking. And granted, there's a lot of stress now, but I remember I, I was taking Saccharomyces back then. So Saccharomyces, it also is considered a probiotic, but it's not a bacteria. So Saccharomyces is a yeast. And, and before you go crazy, 
um, not all yeasts are bad. Candida is a nasty yeast. It's a parasitic yeast, if you ask me, because it just, uh, once you get it, I think most of us do have it, but once it gets triggered to have a lot of babies in your belly, I think it leaks out. Uh, the theory is it leaks out into the bloodstream, leaks out into the joints, leaks out into the brain tissue. Uh, I don't know if I believe in that, but I do believe that uh, it's an opportunistic infection. So if you have HIV or you're on an immunotherapy of some sort because you have uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and you're, or, or psoriatic arthritis and you're on one of those disease-modifying agents of rheumatology, uh, you have to be careful because of the fact that candida can take over. Now, there's a lot of uh, patients uh, uh, with really strong beliefs that the candida is causing everything. I'm not sure about that, but if you're going to do a probiotic and you think you have candida, this is a good one. This specifically has been studied uh, many times with, it might be it's quoted, the same study is quoted over and over again, but uh, this is a nice uh uh, kind of a general uh, synopsis of, of Saccharomyces boulardii. So Saccharomyces is a yeast, but for some reason when the Saccharomyces, uh, sorry, this is the one, this is the general study that talks uh, kind of like the properties of Saccharomyces boulardii. Um, but it is found that this one just talked about uh, its benefits for Crohn's disease. So that's pretty good. When you have a probiotic, if you have a something over the counter, in the probiotic section that might bring down the inflammation in Crohn's disease. I mean, uh, usually nothing else touches Crohn's unless you do fasting mimicking diet and you stay away from dairy and gluten and a couple other things, but usually those folks have to be on immune uh, agents. Um, and it, 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 usually, usually the immune agents do work well. So my Crohn's disease patients, God bless you if you're on medicines. Uh, I believe my Crohn's disease patients should also do better with uh, medical cannabis or at least high-dose CBD, whether it's cannabis or hemp, but that's a different story. However, if you can get a probiotic over-the-counter, and most of them are pretty decent. I mean, this thing was first found uh, in Asia. I think it was with Dr. Boulardi. He noticed uh, some locals were eating the I think it was mangost mangosteen, uh, the, the fruit. They're eating the, the rind, the, the cover. And he was wondering why they were chewing on it, and it supposedly helped with diarrhea. And it is shown that it does help in a couple different ways. And, and it's again, that's the general census, and it talks about it in the study. So look this up on NIH. Uh, really nice. So it decreases inflammatory response. It actually decreases two markers of inflammation, TNF-alpha and interleukin-6. So those two things are usually really hot if you have rheumatoid arthritis, uh, lupus, um, if you have an autoimmune disease, those things are hot. So uh, instead of taking a medicine or a steroid on an immune agent, why not just take Saccharomyces? So it does do that. Also increases uh, secretory IgA, which some of us are missing in the gut. So there are some people who unfortunately don't make IgA. And it, I mean, if you can just take something like this. Now, you don't have to take this one in particular. I just found this one on sale. Uh, I do like uh, Yarrow brand, but I, I wasn't able, when I went to Fruitful Yield, uh, and by the way, I go to Fruitful Yield because in my area, Fruitful Yield will allow you, if you don't like the product, you can return it with a receipt within six days and get credit. So you can try your next probiotic. You know, it, it, you certainly have to kind of go through the refrigerated section, which is what I always do every three months or every time I'm low on one of the bottles. I just go in the refrigerated section, kind of look at the price, look and see on the back if there are at least uh, four different probiotics. Uh, usually it's going to be uh, lactobacilli and bifidobacter, but uh, each of those has a subspecies, uh, ruteri. Or, so um, I, I try to get at least four different ones. I try to get at least seven to 10 billion bacteria, and I like to have it in the refrigerated section. And that's the other cool thing about the yeast. You don't have to refrigerate yeast. So kind of cool. They, they are so hardy. The other ones you don't have to refrigerate are the spored ones. Uh, so check out the video on spores. But I think most of the other ones you really should keep in the ref uh, well, if you can keep it in the refrigerator, the problem is remembering it's in there. So um, and uh, uh, the other question is always when do you take your probiotic? So uh, you know what? Uh, when do you take your vitamin D? When do you take your fish oil? When do you take your magnesium? I just want you guys to take it. So there are rule, there are suggested rules to taking probiotics. Uh, 
but I just say if, if it is easier for you, just take them all in the morning. If it's a one time a day dose, if it's two time a day dose, okay, take them in the morning and then try to keep them next to the dinner table so you remember them. Or if you really forget, keep them next to your toothbrush because most of you should be brushing your teeth twice a day at least. I usually do that three times a day because my wife harps on me and she's a dentist. So, um, but the other cool thing about this thing, uh, Saccharomyces, I mean, uh, so it decreases inflammation. It can control the amount of candida that's in your gut while you're taking it. Uh, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. The, the other, well, I guess you should say before I go into the next positive, the last positive is it does have a short half-life. So usually after you finish this in about five days, no more Saccharomyces in your gut. These guys, as I've talked about in my probiotic uh, lecture or v vlogs, after you finish and you load your microbiota with the, the next four bacteria, the microbiota or, or the gang allows more players in. I think of it like kickball. I, I don't know if anybody plays kickball anymore. In kickball, you had two captains. One captain would say, okay, I want Joey. Next captain would say, I want uh, Agnes. Next captain would say, I want Tommy because he's a great kicker. So it, 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 you try to get the best people on your team. And that's what you do with the probiotic. I think your microbiota, if you keep on taking the same four bacterias, you're just going to keep on asking Joey to be on your team. You're not going to have a team. You need a variety of different bacteria to make up your microbiota. So it has a wide variety of different things that your microbiota can do and fight. So uh, that is the beauty of the Saccharomyces. The... Um, if you can grab a sample, that'd be great. If you can't grab a sample, uh, then just go to your local store. And again, because this doesn't have to be um, refrigerated, you can probably buy this online. But you should check out, if you're in Illinois, check out Fruitful Yield because you're allowed to return if you have a problem with it. Some people with a yeast allergy might not want to take this because it is a yeast. Uh, but it, it does, again, it supports the microbiota, it decreases inflammation, it helps improve, uh, decreases, it improves IgA secretion. So, uh, and it supports the other bacterias that are in your gut while you're taking it. So, uh, I'm going to try this again and note in my journal about the improvements or not. Um, I think that when the bacteria, the microbiota, and the inflammation in the gut is controlled, I think you will have more serotonin release. I think you'll have a better sleep. I think if your poop, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy in one of his movies said, the key to life is a healthy colon. And uh, he was imitating somebody, but you know, it's old school. And I think old school does have a lot of credence. Uh, it's not randomized controlled trials, but the old adage that you gotta sleep, you gotta eat once a day, twice a day, you gotta eat with the family. I think all those old school rules uh, really do persist and there's reasons for them. So. Uh, check out the video. I mean, check out the, the links. Uh, there's a lot more than this, but I like to go to NIH. And um, otherwise, don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell. But if you're in the mood for bacteria, give it a try. I think it might be uh, beneficial for you. You just have to be patient because it's not like you take all this stuff and it the overnight helps, but um, like an antibiotic. You take an antibiotic, like I told you, my patients ask for it because they're leaving out of town or something, and I will succumb and I'll say, go ahead, I'll give you an antibiotic. But if you're not better, you come and see me so I can take a look at you. Take, uh, taking care of people over the phone, it does work, but uh, the question is, are you going to be a coronavirus sufferer? And I'm just giving an antibiotic. But uh, that, again, that's a later uh, video. Uh, but, but the other thing with this is that it does, when you're taking uh, antibiotic and you have, this is the final bullet point for you. So when you're taking an antibiotic, you typically will have diarrhea. This will stop diarrhea because it supposedly settles the bacteria. It uh, kind of acts as a bouncer in the gut. So it decreases inflammation, uh, increases IgA, that um, very good immune uh, uh, globulin. It decreases it, inc it increases the uh, good uh, support of microbiota, decreases candida, and it stops diarrhea. So I, I think this is a great thing to have. Now the question would be: If you have an antibiotic, I'd still take it. If you're ha if you finished your antibiotic and you have diarrhea, then I definitely take it. So a couple different reasons, positive effects. I'd say give it a try. Thanks for watching.